In today's video, we're going to learn about drawing sprites in Pygame, and we're going to do it in a way that we're going to make a really fun little game that I think you're all going to enjoy. However, um, you know, if you don't sub to the channel or you don't uh, give me a like, then maybe I'll just give up halfway through because I'll be so disappointed. So um, this is one of those fun little exercises, drawing spikes in Pi Game, and I think you're really going to enjoy it. So let's get started. Firstly, we're going to set up Pi Game. If you haven't used Pi Game, if you use the MU editor, uh, then it's already installed for you. If you use PyCharm or something else, you may have to pip install the library. But for this one, here we are importing Pygame. Let me know in the comments what editor you're using and I will try to help make sure it works for your editor. So we've got some general variables, running equals true. We're just gonna use that in the main game loop. Windows equals Pygame display 800 by 600. That is going to make the size of the window for you. And finally, the caption, which is race car, because that's the kind of game we're making. And today we're just going to draw the sprites, but I want you to get some ideas as to what concepts we're going to go through. The first thing we're going to do is create a class. Now, if you're doing A-levels, this is year 13 content. Arguably, some of you may use it for projects before then, but I do want you to understand that we are giving you really good quality content that 16, 17 year olds are using. And so we have this class. And let me discuss a little bit about what an object is and what a class is, so you've got some idea. What you have is you have Pi Game Sprite. You need this so that we can draw the sprite and it does something called inheritance. In other words, it grabs everything it needs for this purpose. And so a class is a blueprint. It's your design, which you're going to use to roll off thousands and thousands of these cars. And I was gonna say not literally, but I'll be honest, we're gonna run off 50 cars by the end of the video, so yeah. We are literally going to run lots of these things off. Think of a class as a blueprint. It says how to create all the future cars. And so the first thing we're going to do is initialize. Now, I'm going to be very honest. Functions inside classes are called methods. They're quite similar in some ways to functions. They're similar but different. But it definitely gives you a good idea in your head how it might work. So this is a special method in Python called a dunder, which is for double underline. And if I were in class with you, I may go dunder, 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 because double underlines look like single underlines, look like all sorts of things, but you need to put two underlines either side. Okay, so double underline, dunder. And then self is nearly always needed inside a class. It's about your self-esteem, knowing about yourself. And I could get into this in more detail, but just put it in there. Don't worry about it for now. And then finally, we can pass parameters. In this case, we're going to pass a location parameter. And so just to give you a heads up, this is later in the program. But if we want a car, we make car1 equals car and we put 374.30. That's the location we want. And you can see the X and Y there. Notice self is not required when you're making the declaration. I'm not going to go into the details for now. Take it on trust. I'm a trusted YouTuber, yeah? So, um, but yeah, I could explain it, but that would take all day. And I know you want to get on with making your cool car. And so the next one is a Pi game thing, which again, actually creates a object within an object. But this is standard Pi game stuff to enable us to draw something. And this one is going to use the racecar.png file. Now, if you're using MU, it needs to be in the same folder in the MU underscore code folder. If you're using another thing, in most cases, that will also be true. Put it in the same folder as the rest of your code. And then you can draw your racecar.png files. And the convert alpha is really nice too because that enables you to draw it really nicely. So put this in image inside this object, loads in the image file, and this smooths the edge of the PNG and improves performance. 
The next one basically creates a rectangle which makes it easier to handle because you can just literally move the rectangle around. And this one basically puts the location to the top left hand corner. Yes, it is a choice, but trust me, this is the easiest way. Okay, so we've got a lovely class and you can now see you can create some cards by doing this bit. We are missing an important thing. That's right, we're missing the gaming loop. And so the loop is fairly standard to some of the other things we've done. There's a quit button. So if you press the cross, it does this. This sets the window color to black. It's not super necessary at this point because it, by default it's black. However, uh, we will use it later when we make the game. And you know, hey, maybe you want a different color. This gets the object ready to display. And this actually does the display part. So these are the nice bits of code that you have available. And you can see the complete code here. I've uh, been really sporting and given you all of the code here, which I think is lovely for you. However, why don't we have a go at a couple of little challenges just to make sure you understand the basics. So challenge one, can you create four cars? one in each corner. Given I've given you two cars, I think you can move them about and I think you can create four cars. But really, if we're honest, objects aren't of that much value if you've got to name each object and carry on like that. I mean, that's a pretty basic way of doing things. However, Python is very, very nice and will allow you to make 50 cars with relatively little effort. Okay, you can create 50 cars in a for loop. Now pause the game here because it is as simple as you think. I will give you a hint on the next page. And there are two ways of doing it. There is the slightly longer way of doing it with for loops, but it won't make any difference to the performance of your code, but it's possibly a little bit more readable for beginners. And there is something called a list comprehension, which would do it all in one line. It's a little bit crazy. Now, if you have no clue how to do this, I will give you a hint in a minute. But pause now and have a try. If you know how to use lists, I promise you it's not a big step up. Okay. Are you really struggling? Okay, then. Here is the hint. That is the actual only little bit of code you need in terms of creating extras. But how can you make those X positions and Y positions work so that they appear nicely and not just straight on top of each other? Okay, give it a go. If you're super, super stuck, look in the description, hit the sub button, hit the like button, and an answer will appear for you. Subbed and liked? Okay, well, if you're desperate, go have a read. Okay, if you enjoyed this video and you would like me to turn this into a complete game, then obviously sub and let me know in the comments that you're interested. And also let me know in the comments which particular editor you are using because I will try to make sure it works on at least the common editors. Right, all the best. I will see you next time.